scissors, can openers, notebooks, knives, and the entire English writing system. We've developed a world for the majority of its people at the cost of accommodating the few. But so often in life, it's our differences that are our greatest advantage, and I'm here to point out the advantage that lefties have in combat sports, specifically against right-handed people. For a lot of places, left-handedness is suppressed for cultural and practical reasons. However, in the West, we see about 10% of the population having this gift. Despite being a minority, they seem to be so dominant in sports. For instance, in tennis, the ATP rankings have 15 lefties in the top 100, and 7 in the top 50. In baseball, we see 35% of the players are left-handed, and in the UFC, roughly 22% of the roster takes a southpaw stance. Some of the world's greatest athletes are naturally right-handed, but play their respective sport as a southpaw. So let's dig in. I would argue that the most important advantage left-handed athletes have is the frequency at which their opponents get to interact with lefties. If for a moment we were to examine the noble sport of ping-pong, we can think of a number of things a left-handed player would do slightly differently. Their serve, the spin of the ball, and the angle of the backhanded shot. If we were to envision a ping-pong club of 50 players, 10% of whom are left-handed, we could simulate their experience. If we were to simulate 10,000 random matches, the right-handed player with the most experience against left-handed players would have played 57 games against the southpaw, whereas the lefties would have encountered over 300 matches against the opposite hand. So the unfamiliarity factor would come into play considerably. I would argue that this factor bleeds into many sports, where the sheer number of times you encounter the opposite hand, the more experience you gain. The 2009 study found that tennis players were better at predicting the direction and distance of shots made by the right-handed opponent. A 2012 study found that left-handed volleyball players are also harder to predict. I would argue that these lefties may not be that much more talented than their right-handed counterparts. For instance, in baseball, we see this quantified in an article written by Guy Molyneux and Phil Birnbaum at 5.38. After looking at over half a million innings and a thousand pitchers, they found that left-handed pitchers are just slightly better than their counterparts. However, when we compare the quality of the pitches based on speed and spin of the ball, we find that left-handed pitchers don't throw nearly as well. So how does this look in MMA? Well, after taking a look at UFC data, which you can find in the link below, I found some shocking results. Southpaws are better in nearly all measures when facing off against an orthodox fighter. Things like control time, clinch strikes, leg strikes, and overall significant strikes are even between each. However, southpaws have better takedown accuracy 56% of the time. They seem to be able to dominate their opponent with the number of takedowns landed, enjoying an 18% advantage. When it comes to striking accuracy, southpaws have a 5% edge meaning that the volume of strikes thrown by orthodox fighters is what evens out the actual strikes landed. Southpaws enjoy more body shots 53% of the time, and land more headshots 55% of the time. Perhaps the most shocking result of my analysis is the number of knockdowns between the two. Southpaws score more knockdowns 74% of the time. I think this points to the tennis and volleyball studies I mentioned earlier where it becomes hard to interpret the strike or takedown headed your way when it's coming from an unfamiliar stance. Overall, southpaws win 53% of their matchups against orthodox fighters. They outsub them 52% of the time, get a KO or TKO 53% of the time, and enjoy decision victories 54% of the time. So what do we do with this information now that we have it? Should every new martial artist adopt a southpaw stance immediately? Well, a 4% edge is hard to ignore, but I would argue that there's more to the story. The stats I gave were from 1993 to 2021, where we include the sport at its infancy. Think of the number of shifts we've seen in the sport in that time. If we were to filter the data to the past decade, the 4% edge southpaws have would have shrunk to 2%. And if we were to look at the most recent five years of data, we would see that edge shrink and even flip, where orthodox fighters appear to win 51% of the time. The unfamiliarity southpaws enjoyed at the start of the sport seems to be drying up, which would make sense as there are more southpaws in the sport. 
people would spend more time training for them. However, the fact remains that there are a disproportionate amount of southpaws in the UFC. Right-handed viewers of this video might still be debating whether or not to make the switch to a southpaw stance. What would be a more effective strategy is fighting switch. Despite switch fighters being only 4% of the company's historic roster, they currently comprise 9% of the top 10 rankings. In the current pound for pound rankings, there are more switch fighters than southpaws. It just so happens that switch fighters also have a 3% edge over orthodox fighters, and seem to nullify any edge southpaws naturally have over their opponent. Committing to a single stance might be a bit too rigid for modern MMA. It would be wiser to use and hone different tools from both stances. For instance, a shifting hook, a switch kick, a knee shield on the weak side, or a body lock pass on the other. That's it for me. Till next time.